Hello everyone, my name is Tim Hansen, and today we're going to be setting up anti-spyware on a SonicWall Gen 7 Sonic OS 7 firewall. Okay, so moving right into it, all the spyware related or anti-spyware related settings can be found here under policy, security services, and anti-spyware. And then we've got some basic information related to the anti-spyware signature database and then of course a simple toggle button here to turn the service on. And then what I'll do is I'll just skip over here to the signatures tab quickly and we can see if we scroll through that each anti-spyware signature gets a priority level assigned to it. Okay, so some threats are of course going to have a high priority level while the remaining will get either a low or medium priority level rating. And the reason why I'm showing you this is if we look back or if we go back to the status tab and look below, we can see we get the option to enable or disable both the detection and prevention settings for each of the three priority levels I just mentioned. So if while in the process of deciding exactly how you want to set this up, you elect to maybe only detect low priority attacks, at least then you can look at the signatures page and scroll through to see exactly what's being excluded from the engine. Okay, for me, I'm going to enable both detect and prevent for all three priority levels. And then below we can decide what protocols the anti-spyware engine will look for files in. All right, and then if you want the engine to scan outgoing traffic, we can, of course, toggle this button here. All right, and then if I click configure, you'll see the options to customize the alert the end user is gonna see in their browser if the anti-spyware engine detects something bad, as well as there'll be a spot to define hosts, networks, network ranges and whatnot for the exclusion list. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. All right, and then if I head back over to the signatures tab and just pick a random signature and follow it all the way to the right here, I'll find this little edit button. So within here is where I would set some settings that are specific to this one anti-spyware signature. So if I wanted to enable or disable detection or prevention of this one signature, here's where I would do it. And we'll also get some options on whether to exclude or include specific users or user groups or IP address ranges from this signature. I don't know of too many circumstances where you'd want to actually whitelist an anti-spyware signature but the option is there if you do need to. All right, and at this point, the anti-spyware portion of the configuration is all set up. So the only thing I would have to do now is to go under or go over to zones and ensure that the zone I want to apply the anti-spyware engine to is ticked off here under anti-spyware. And of course it is by default for the LAN and WAN zones, which is good, okay. And now if I just skip over to the access rules section, if I open up a random access rule and move over to the security profile tab, you'll see this little DPI button. Okay, so this DPI button gives you the option to disable DPI on a per access rule basis. And what I mean by DPI is the security services that are anti-spyware, antivirus, and IPS are included in that DPI term. So if I have an access rule I don't want to apply the security services to as a whole, I can just click this little button and it's done. Okay. So with that, this pretty much wraps up the video for setting up anti-spyware. So I'll just say thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.